Oh, what's shaking, guys? These are birds, dude. These birds. These birds. They don't seem angry. They Bro. just, they seem like birds. Can you imagine birds? Birds. They're government drones. <laughs> Government drone birds, bro. <laughs> Today we are gonna talk about, uh, is the G37 sedan a good first car? You wanna just limit it to sedans or uh, coupes as well? We can talk about the coupe as well. Okay. Is the G37 a good first car for you to get? And we're talking like you just got your driver's license and yeah. you are literally looking for your first car to buy. Yeah. Doesn't matter what your age is, you just you just got your driver's license. I guess that's so, fair. Um, this is a 2010 G37X sedan. It is the all-wheel drive version. I believe they're, what, like 330 horsepower? Something, uh, like, that, something yeah. like that, around those range. The uh, sedans are actually also lighter than the coupes. Are they really? They are. That's interesting. Yeah. Is that specific to the X as well, or is it? Well, it's all the same drivetrain between the Xs, so I don't know if the X is lighter than the, uh, I mean, the X has to be heavier oh, than the rear wheel drive, yeah. but I don't know if the X sedan is lighter than the rear wheel drive coupe, but I believe it's actually a pretty big difference in weight, like a, like a hundred pounds or something. Yeah. So, uh, if you, if you're looking for a first car, a car that you want, that's going to last, uh, a while, this is a great car to grow into, but I think it's important that we talk about, um, the, the amount of power that these cars have versus the amount of power that like a lot of people's first sports cars had back in the day when we were like getting our licenses. We both had the same car. We both started on Integra LSs. Yeah. And those were 140 horsepower cars. And we were dumb. It's we were dumb. Best. We yeah. made a lot of really dumb decisions. I made, I made, I made dumb decisions in my first Integra that had I been in something like a 350Z or a G37, probably would have had much worse consequences than, than they did. Because I used to drive very fast in that car for how much power it had. So um, if you are the type of person who thinks that they're gonna drive very aggressively, I mean, I can't tell you what not to do, but you probably should just, you know, maybe drive the car carefully until you really understand how the power and the suspension works. Well, yeah, you had a decent story of that with someone recently, like on the East Coast, some cop pulled him over or something. Yes. Oh, this is actually a great story. Okay, so this is actually uh, a great story. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about this This story that happened. It was, it was really sad. It was a, a Kia Stinger on the East Coast. Uh, this guy was 24 or 20, 20 to 24 years old. He had a provisional license and he was with a date in the car. Cop has it on body cam. You guys can look it up. Type in like Kia Stinger uh, cop warning crash or something on YouTube. You guys can find it. It's body cam video of a cop warning uh, this guy who has a provisional license with the Kia that doesn't even have its full registration yet with his date in the car He's, this guy's driving 100 miles an hour down down the boulevard. Yeah. Almost hit a few people, ran lights. Cop lets him off with a warning. Five minutes later, he comes up to respond to an accident. And it turns out that the same driver of the same Kia Stinger didn't take the warning. He was still going 100. I think the GPS said he, uh, at the time of impact, he went from the speed of the car changed from like 100, 110 to like 65 miles an hour, like that. Yeah. Basically, he came up on the accident and the Kia had gone under a trailer for a semi and it sheared the roof off. So you guys can imagine what the people looked like. They were KOA. So- If you, uh, if you ever saw Hot Fuzz, you remember? The uh, I don't- come up on the accident. In, in the oh, field, and it's like and super, yeah, yeah. Their, yeah. Heads, their heads are like chopped off. Yeah, 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 something. So, um, Cars like these are are a lot. I will say that the the sedan is a lot more forgiving than the coupe, and the technology in these cars make them a lot easier to drive than fast rear wheel drive cars back in the day. So they are great cars to have, but they are still cars that need to be absolutely respected. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, are new and you want to have this car, just be sure that you're respecting the power. Uh, let's. Now that we've talked, put that whole tangent aside, let's talk about how the car is as far as like 
a car, the, the G37 specifically. These cars are hyper reliable. They only have, the, the main issue that they have is the heater union from the coolant. You just have to take care of that. It's a, it's a, a little metal piece that you just got to throw in. Um, and otherwise, the VQ37HR from the G37 Coupe and Sedan is basically a bulletproof motor. There are plenty of people who have those motors. I've seen screenshots of guys going 330,000 miles, original motor, still pulls on everybody, still feels like the day I got it. These cars, they're, they're super reliable. They're more reliable than the Q53.0Ts, more reliable than the Q63.0Ts. Time, uh, time will tell, but they're probably gonna be more reliable than the new Nissan Zs. The 370Z, if you guys are considering a 370Z, has the same motor and transmission. So if you're debating on those, if you're thinking about reliability between those two platforms, it's the same thing. So you're not really gonna have to worry about that. I think the fit and finish on the Infiniti is better. And that's always been something that Infiniti would strive for. It is all Nissan after all, yeah. but they do put a little bit more effort into the fit and finish on the Infinities versus, the, versus the, the Zs. I mean, I mean, yeah, so we have a 350Z here. This was the HKS uh, demo car in 07, had the GT supercharger on it. Uh, it needs a little bit of work, but disregard that. I've driven plenty of G35s alongside this and the G35s, just feel Every like a much more it comes down to is you'll end up with like more clips holding the panels you'll end up with yep, more, more sound, sound deadening, deadening material yeah stuff that makes it a lot more comfortable and and more well-finished vehicle yeah yeah you know? exactly yeah. so is it a car that you can buy that will last a really long time that has a really nice finish that rides well that performs well that handles well yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is this a car that I would recommend to a person who understands how to respect the power uh, of the car? 1000%, like a million percent. Uh, it's the same analogy with motorcycles, right? Everyone says, you know, you should start on the, sm the, the slower bikes. Yeah. This is true. It doesn't mean that you can't start on a 1000. I mean, I'm not saying that you I started. Kinda, yeah. I kind of did because yeah. I went from the Grom to the RC. Well, you started on a Grom. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like it's still, it was, yeah. it's a lot smaller bike in yeah. comparison to like even the 400, 300. So if you guys, if you guys haven't heard this analogy for motorcycles, a lot of guys will be like, hey, I really want to get a, a R1. It's my first motorcycle. And a lot of guys will say no. It doesn't mean that you can't start on an R1. Mm -hmm. You can but the likelihood that you're gonna crash on an R1 with very little riding experience is extremely high. It's a, it's a much different animal. It's a much different animal. If you are, if you have the self-control to respect the bike until you can, you have the skill to, to control the bike, you can absolutely get that bike as your first bike. Sure. Um, and I'm not saying like these G37s are like, you know, Hellcats. They're not, they're not like these like cars that are gonna like break loose on you, but they're, they're quick cars. You know, like they're, I mean, I mean they are I mean, faster honestly, than scat packs. Honestly, just, just being realistic about it. I mean, the black 350, you go to launch that and the rear end's coming out on you all the yeah. time. This yeah. does the same thing. Yeah. And this has less power, both have less power than that. Yeah, you know, yeah, this, you, the, yeah, both of these 350Zs have like somewhere between 220 to 260 wheel horsepower. Yeah. This this is probably with drivetrain loss, probably somewhere in like 295. You you do have one other thing though going for you in this particular model being an X, you know, being all wheel drive. Faster launching, yeah. Well, not only that, but also you have a lot less likelihood that the rear is going to come out on you because you have the front gripping. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just something to think about too. Yeah, um, let's talk about uh, theft. If you guys are worried about about uh, your car being stolen because I'm sure a lot of guys with, yeah, a lot of Q50s and Q60s are getting stolen recently. Um, it is crazy. A lot of, and a lot of guys are stealing them to take them to takeovers or, or commit other crimes with them which is absolutely insane. Which makes sense though for the car to have that kind of power and all that. Yeah, it, no, it's, I mean, it is, it is, there's a reason why these cars are so popular at takeovers is because they are easy to steal and they're, and they're, they're easy to find and they have a lot of power. Um, if you guys are concerned about theft, there's a really easy solution for this. The main reason why these cars get stolen is because they have this intelligent key. Um, so basically what happens is if you are, within like around the door, you can unlock the door without taking the key out of your pocket. And then once you're in the car, uh, you can put your foot on the brake and start the car with a push button start. And you never have to take the key out of your pocket. So it's it's fantastic. It's super convenient, right? Also no. The problem is <laughs> that there are guys out there who have bought this piece of technology and 
Um, if you guys have experience with this, let, let us know in the comments. Um, I'm not talking about if you do it yourself. I'm talking about if it happened to you. Yeah. But if you do it yourself also, I guess comment. But <laughs> let us know. <laughs> but uh, they basically, what they can do is these, they have a device that can uh, amplify the signal of your key. So what they do is they go to the driveway of someone's house and the Q50s in the driveway. And usually what a guy with a Q50 or whatever intelligent key will do is they'll throw their key like in the bowl near their front door, right? So they go up with this device, they amplify it, they pick up the signal of your key, then they download the signal to the device and they can walk right up to the car and then the car thinks that the key is on that person because the device is replicating the frequency of the key. And then they just hop in the car, push button start and drive it away. It's actually very easy to steal these cars, which is kind of sad. Um, in terms of that, uh, do you see a lot of G37 stolen versus Q50s? Not really. And I think the big reason for that is, um, there's two reasons in my opinion. I think the first reason is that the Q50s are newer um, and people always want the new new. And the second reason is that the Q50s, most of them, the 2015s have a 3.7, so it's super reliable, but most of them are running the 3.0 turbos. And uh, I think a lot of them are braking. So they're stealing those cars in order to take parts to repair their own Q50s also. Because that's one of the major reasons back in the day when we had our Integras to kind of circle back around, yeah. the most common cars that were stolen in the United States, the top 16, eight of them were Integras. Yeah. And almost all of the rest of them were Camrys. And the reason why they were stolen so much is because people were partying, the, partying them out, yep. stripping them, selling parts, because they were such a common car that needed that they could, people could part them out and sell the, sell the parts very easily. Easy. So uh, I think that's a big reason why the Q50s get stolen more. Doesn't mean the G37s don't get stolen, but that's something to consider in terms of um, if you're worried about theft, get an RFID blocking sleeve. It's a, it's like, it'll basically, it's like a Faraday cage. If you guys don't know what a Faraday cage is, it's like a metal cage that blocks electronic frequencies. So you can get a sleeve on Amazon. You can put your key in it if your key if like so for example where i park my key is like five floors away from the car and the other spare key is like 10 floors away from the car so it's like you know you're not getting into my car you know but i also have a lock garage with an attendant so don't even think about it <laughs> this is my g37 but but um but if you park, let's say you park your car in your driveway of your house and you keep your, your key like somewhere near the front door, this is definitely something that you need to be considering because it is absolutely something that can happen to you if you have a uh, anything with an intelligent key these days. This isn't even specific to G37s, Q50s. This is anything that uses uh, like Lexus, all Lexuses do this these days. People just don't steal Lexuses because I don't know why. I mean, I, I, I really don't know why, but that covers the theft part. So we've covered reliability, we've covered power and respecting the power of the car. Um, theft, covered. We've covered theft. Yep. Um, the luxury and uh, how people treat this car. Everyone loves this car that I talked to. Like I had a guy approach me at the airport. He was like, bro, I really fuck with your Infinity. That's really dope. I was like, oh, thanks man. You know, like I get compliments on this car all the time. Uh, people love it. Uh, my girlfriend loves it. She's the one who bought it. Um, I hope she does. Yeah, I hope she loves it. Otherwise, why did she buy this car? <laughs> why did you buy it? Uh, it's it's super reliable. The insurance isn't crazy. It's a sedan, you know. Uh, I do think that the insurance rates are kind of going up because of all these takeover boys. So thanks, takeover boys. Thanks, takeover boys. It's kind of crappy, but um, insurance isn't bad. Luxury is great. Reliability is great. We covered theft. Just keep your key in a sleeve. Otherwise, you don't really have anything to worry about. And if you're super worried about it, keep an air tag in your trunk. Like, or hidden somewhere. Or hidden anywhere. Just pop, pop an air tag somewhere in your car so that you know where it is at all times. If you're if you're that concerned about theft and you you can't do the blocking sleeve or whatever. Um, and otherwise, the short answer, which actually wasn't a short answer at all, is actually a very long answer, is yes, this car is awesome. You should absolutely car, yeah. get it for a first car. It's a car that will grow with you over time. It's a car that you will 
possibly regret selling. I actually have a coworker who had a G37. He sold it and he got a charger and he regrets it and he wants another G37. I'm not even joking. Okay. He literally has been like, he's like, oh, because he, he's seen he's yeah. seen mine. He's like, oh, dude, can you help me find another one? Because all the ones I'm looking at are clapped out. And I was like, well, that sucks. <laughs> I shouldn't have sold your other one, dude. So it's something that you're gonna love. It's something that you that you want to keep over time. Something that you can grow with. It's something that can take a real beating. Like I don't baby this car. The only times I baby this car is when I'm really just trying to conserve fuel. But like otherwise, like you know, if I feel like you know doing a pull, I do a pull. We did it the other day. Yeah. You know, so like uh, you can you can take this anywhere. It's got great storage room. I think my only real complaint for storage room is that the back seat doesn't fold down. But there is a video that we did on that, five things we hate about the G37. You can check that out up here. We have done a lot of videos on G37, so if you guys are curious about that, we can link a G37 playlist. Otherwise, I think that's gonna summarize it. It was super long-winded, but I really wanted to be specific because uh, I feel like we have a responsibility as people who have been working on cars and around cars for as long as we have. Like, what, like 20 years we've been working on cars together, like literally, and... You've been working on cars longer, but we've been working on cars together for oh, 20 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we've been into cars together, or, or like we've been into cars for longer than that. And yeah. I've, you know, so uh, we've we've seen a lot of people make a lot of mistakes. We've and also made a lot of mistakes. We've also made a lot of mistakes. So it's so Freeways. it's it's very important for me to be long-winded <laughs> about certain things when, especially when it comes to theft, because I'm a victim of theft. My Integra actually got stolen right after Both that. Multiple times. I, my Integra got stolen after after that statistic came out. The 98 Integra was at the top of the list, and then yours got and stolen. my 98 Integra got stolen like less than a month later. I still love that you heard it drive away. I heard it drive. <laughs> I did. I did. That was that was that's a story for another time. But uh, <laughs> respect the car. Whatever you guys decide to get as your first car, respect it. Um, but you can't go wrong with this. Yeah, I'll agree it's a with fantastic that. car. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are looking for, if you guys are interested in knowing what to look for when considering buying a G37 sedan, uh, we will make a video like that in the future. Just comment and let us know down in the comments below. Uh, and if you have any questions otherwise, let us know in the comments down below. And if you liked the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Thank you guys for listening to our rant, and we'll see you in the next one. We appreciate you guys.